The Big West Conference is on the move. Yes, the trucks are loaded up and have been headed eastbound and down to Las Vegas, Nevada. It's only fitting that a league with this much parity would come to a town where so many lives can be changed with the roll of the dice. It's glitz and glam dressed in neon where the lights shine brightest when the stakes are highest. The oasis in the desert represents what all these teams desire. That's one chance to make a legacy legendary. A trip to San Antonio is at stake, but only for whoever can survive Sin City. These are the Big West Championships, and it starts right now. from Michelob Ultra Arena at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's the Big West Women's Basketball Championships, the quarterfinals in the 5-4 matchup between Hawaii and CSU Bakersfield. The winner gets a date with top seed Davis. That will be on Friday in the semis. But boy, we got a good matchup here before we get to that here this afternoon. My name is Trent Rush, joined by WNBA analyst Dave Miller. And Dave, this should be a really competitive game between two tough teams. Well, we've got two physical teams that place a high premium on defense and rebounding, I expect it to be a slugfest here in Las Vegas. When you're looking at key players in this matchup, Amy Atwell has been a mainstay in this Hawaii program as a six-year senior. Well, she certainly is. She's a knockdown shooter, and she's got deep three-point range. She's got the ultimate green light, a very quick release, and she needs very little time and space to get it off. A rhythm shooter that loves to hear net noise. Then on the other side for CSU Bakersfield, Lexis Green. She leads this team, a three-level scorer that is very aggressive coming off screens. She sets the table, knows who's hot, knows who's not. She's small in stature, but she's huge in fight. Silky smooth right there, Dave Miller. As we get a chance to take a look at the bracket here with these two teams here in the 5-4 matchup. Each team one game over 500. Identical records in league play at 7-6. and six. And now awaiting a chance to face UC Davis. And that game will be on Friday, as we mentioned, in the semifinals. Let's now welcome the third member of our team, Courtney Sweet. Well, in their first year as Big West Conference member, CSU Bakersfield has made their presence known. They were picked eighth in both preseason polls, and they finished fourth. So head coach Greg McCall said that speaks to his team's mentality. They're going to need to bring that toughness here tonight. Yes, they beat Hawaii twice already this year, but Coach McCall said he knows. McCall, excuse me, said he knows that Coach Beeman always has her team playing their best basketball this time of year. He also said, you know, Hawaii's coming off a weekend where they upset UC Davis, so they're going to play with more poise. Guys, I think we're in for a great matchup. It should be a fun one, and that's what you would expect in the 4-5 or five matchup. Heck, we saw a really good one in the 1-9 matchup just a, a less than an hour ago when UC Davis was able to escape in a tough game against Cal State Fullerton. There's a look at Greg McCall in his eighth season at CSU Bakersfield. How about this? Exactly 500 in his career, 115 and 115. He played for Bakersfield back in 1991 when they went to the Division II Final Four for Pat Douglas, who later would give him his start as a coach. Pat Douglas would later be the men's basketball coach at UC Irvine. So a big last tie there as the opening tip is controlled by the Roadrunners. It's CSU Bakersfield in white. They are the four seed. Hawaii is the five. They are in their road greens. Alexis Green immediately with a swing pass to Andy Easley. Shot jump at the top of the circle there by Eggleston. And now a loose ball comes out to Hawaii. So. Here we go. Less than 30 seconds into this game. First possession, a stop. Lydia Davies is a freshman from Alaska. She has the ball right now. He minds the point guard, goes inside out to Atwell, who left it on the front of the rim. But how about the point guard, Emai, getting that rebound? But she's just very pesky, sparky. I mean, I love her. She'll push it in transition. She can set the table, and I love her dribble penetration. Spun right to the hoop and laid it in. First bucket of this game, 2-0 Hawaii. Here one minute into the first quarter. And Trent, I think Hawaii is really strong defensively. They don't make mistakes. They know their coverages. You know, Laura Beeman, where she can put a game plan together, and these gals have been able to execute it throughout the regular season. Good stop inside, making it tough on Easley, who's a very good three-point shooter. Knocked away, good hustle there by Miracle Saxon. And my goodness, did Greg McCall have some 
big time praise for Miracle Saxon as a team captain, a leader when it comes to hustle, energy, rebounding, all the little things. Engelson has been their leading scorer the last couple of years. She's a player to watch, as we've talked about earlier. It's a take right there by Newbert. It's taken away. That was great action, box action. All they wanted to do was get the ball into Casey. Still 2-0 Hawaii as this one goes out of bounds. And it's going to be Wahine basketball. 8-14 remaining here in the first quarter as Laura Beeman's the head coach in his, her ninth season. At Hawaii, former WA NBA assistant with the Sparks, was at USC. And is a California Junior College Hall of Famer after her time at Mount Sac, where she was so successful. Corner three is good by Ima. Well, we talked about her being a, a, a good little point guard and pushing in transition. You mentioned it. Very good at three. Her feet were set. Hands ready. Beautiful follow through. 5 0 Hawaii early, but then there's CSU Bakersfield. Andy Easley, a 34% three point shooter, gets the Roadrunners on the board. It's 5 to 3, 7 minutes and 39 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. It's to Jaden Alexander. Looking to answer with a three. Are the Wahine. Doesn't happen. Jump ball on the arrow belongs to Hawaii. Well, I just love the activity by Casey Newbert. You know, six foot one, you know, four or five type player. And she's a lefty that's really good in the post, but she just chased that ball down and she understands the value of every possession, especially in a tournament game. You know, everyone thinks it's at the end of the game. You can win a game with the play here or there. They all add up. Davies on the attack, looking to go up that right side. Nearly taken away there, but saved along the sideline there by Atwell. Saxon almost took it, and then Davies got to the basket, made the left-handed lay-in, 7-3 Hawaii here less than three minutes in. Love Davies' cut, but what a pass by Newbert. Or, I'm sorry, that was Amy Atwell, I believe. Yeah, Atwell's who yeah. saved it and then made the dish. Yeah. Now a three ball, and it rattles in. Miracle Saxon showing off the range. It's a one-point game, 7-6, six, 645 remaining here in the first. And a rejection on the other end. A swap by Jaden Eggleston. Well, you can see the athleticism and the activity defensively. Bakersfield, extremely athletic. Their guards can score. They've got good post play. They do a good job on both ends of the floor. 6.37 remaining here in quarter number one as that goes out of bounds. So the Roadrunners of CSU Bakersfield will take over the four seed. They're down by one at the moment, seven to six. I like this high st staggered action that you've got Green sort of figuring things out. They like to play fast. They've got four guards. They'll play with one big, either a four or a five. Really dynamic offensively. Engelson looking for the take, and he gets knocked out of her hands by Newbert. Good defense right there for the sophomore from Colorado. And now Hawaii will bring Deja Phillips into the game, the sixth player of the year in the Big West Conference. You see right here, she sizes her up. She puts the ball on the floor with that middle drive, isn't able to finish, but they get the ball baseline out of bounds. Nine on the shot clock, and easily had all kinds of room. But she's so versatile offensively. Trent, she can play the one through the four. She's what watching her game. She's like a Swiss Army knife. She just does a lot of things extremely well. Three straight makes for Bakersfield, and now they are on top. So it's eight, seven Roadrunners. I like Phillips, but you got to make your dribble take you somewhere. Just don't dribble and pick it up. Now whistle here against Bakersfield and a foul. So a couple of subs coming into the game for both teams. Five minutes, 50 seconds left as Atwell heads to the bench for Hawaii. Well, you mentioned Phillips was the sixth uh, player of the year award, a 5'10 freshman. She's been in and out of the starting lineup. Extremely aggressive offensively. Um, really good player. I just want to see her. You put the ball on the floor, make something happen. Don't dribble to dribble. Both teams have good players that come off the bench. Vanessa Austin just entered for CSU Bakersfield. There's a strong take by Jaden Alexander. 
will count a chance to turn two into three. But well, she's so long and bouncy at five foot ten, an athletic guard. She rebounds the ball well, and she gets her shots within the offense. Now you may see her dribble drive to the middle, but that's part. That's a method to their madness. They want to get downhill, whether it's to finish like she just did and draw the foul, or penetrate, kick, or drop off to a big. Alexander can't get the free throw, but did give Hawaii the lead right back. So it's 9-8, five and a half minutes to go here in quarter number one of the quarterfinals, Big West Women's Basketball Championships. Winner of this game gets UC Davis in the semis on Friday. To the basket, it's Saxon. Again, she scores. Well, that's a nice move. She's got five. It really is a, a nice 3-4, an aggressive driver. They're going to have to stay between her and the basket, square her up and make her dribble sideline to sideline, not down the lane. 10-9 Bakersfield after the tough defense right there. It goes out of bounds. Bakersfield last to touch it. It was Saxon. You know, you can see why Greg McCall really was glowing when he was talking about Miracle Saxon and what she brings. It's beyond the box score with players like her. Midway through the first quarter, 10-9, Bakersfield leading Hawaii. Imai had a couple of big buckets early, left that one short. Well, I like the way Deja Phillips ran down the ball. She didn't get it, but she's very, very active on that end. Bakersfield can push and transition. A little bit of zipper action right there. Both teams very well coached in the half court. Vanessa Austin can't get the left-handed hook shot to drop. Saxon chasing after it, but into the hands of Deja Phillips. It seems like Phillips is involved in a lot of plays. Uh, I, I can see where she won that award. Alexander for three. And then saves her own miss. Got it to the teammate inside. And Orgy can't get that one. It's 10-9. Bakersfield has the lead. 4-16 remaining here in the first. are of this place every action we take needs to have purpose and that purpose is not to catch every single fish we come across so good. the ocean has been here a million years before we ever got here and it's gonna be here a million years after The University of Hawaii at Manoa is a globally recognized center of learning and research with a kuleana to serve the people and places of Hawaii and the world. Create a stronger, sustainable future for you, your community, Hawaii and beyond. Eia ke kahua. It starts here. Go to takemetomanoa.org today. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. And cooking have all these parallels. The way that we respect ingredients, the way that we look at our environment, you become hyper aware of your surroundings. There's no secret ingredients, secret techniques. I just cook local food, but it's local food done with intent. And I think that that's why a lot of people love it. Bakersfield's got a 10-9 lead over Hawaii, the four-seeded Roadrunners leading the five. Wahine, got a good match in the Big West Women's Basketball Championships quarterfinal meeting. And early on, Dave Miller, we we're seeing both teams being pretty aggressive offensively, trying to get to the basket. Well, they're very strong. They've got both have talented guards, and they're, they're very good in transition, and both teams can execute in the half court. And that speaks volumes to the two head coaches we're seeing. Both are really good at putting girls at spots, getting game shots. Orgy gets the first free throw. 
And the second. The freshman from Rancho Cucamonga, six foot two, had 11 in the game against Long Beach a couple of weeks ago. It's, that gives Hawaii the lead right back. So 11 to 10. There were just over four minutes remaining in this first quarter. Down low, they go to Vanessa Austin at the basket. She gets hit, and now she'll get a couple of free throws. Boy, I'll tell you, I really like the way she gets into the lane, and she, she's big, she spreads out, she's able to call for the ball. Um, looks like she could be very, very efficient. I mean, if I'm coaching that team, and I, this is the first time I've seen CSU Bakersfield live, I think she'd be great in some high-low action. You can get her the basketball. Big, big target. Austin is six foot three from Salt Lake City. She averages about seven points a game as a team captain. She is a player that at least last year preferred coming off the bench, and that was a role that she liked. She plays starter minutes as she misses that free throw, but a role coming off the bench for her, she seems to like the energy doing that better. Well, I got to tell you, when I, when I saw her come out the very first time, I didn't know she was from Salt Lake City. I'm wondering if she's related to Ike or uh, Ike Austin or Alex Austin as, that I coached at Arizona State. As, as a matter of fact, as Isaac Austin is her father. Well, I recruited him. I signed yes. him to play at Arizona State. You know, he played in the NBA with the Utah Jazz, was Carl Malone's rookie, got most improved with the Miami Heat. That's unbelievable. Yeah, a small world. 11-year NBA career, played with seven different teams, and was recruited by Dave Miller. Well, and that's not the important part, but Ike and Alex's brother was, was on that team. I mean, they're both like sons to us. I mean, you, you talk about two quality individuals. And when I saw her, it just, I saw Ike, and then I thought it can't be. And when you said Salt Lake, I got chills. And again, I, I was dumb to play it because you could have said, no, no, I don't know. But man, that's spot on. Free throw missed there by Jaden Alexander. 11-11 is our score, three minutes and 40 seconds. We do apologize, you can't see the score right now, so I'm gonna do my very best to give it to you as often as we can. Second foul shot is in and out, so it stays 11-11. Now here comes CSU Bakersfield. Strong tank right to the basket. And a finish inside for Lexus Green. Certainly one of the better three-level scorers in this league. I've seen her use a float game at times going down the lane, but you can't give her a head of steam. You've got to stay in front of her and level her off. She'll be dangerous. It's Bakersfield by two. With it now is Orgy to the basket. No good. And there's Austin for the rebound. I gotta tell you, she plays better defense than her daddy. <laughs> Up the floor, running the floor. Austin inside, just can't get the finish. Bakersfield's made five of the last six shots. Hawaii has missed four in a row. They haven't scored in a field goal in close to three minutes. And now with 2.48 remaining here in the first, it's Bakersfield by two. I like 13 their, 11. I, I'm sorry, Trent, I like their action, but I want to see them get downhill to the rim and finish. It's a fifth straight miss now for the Wahine. That's easily for three. Well, I thought it was an easy shot, but I'll tell you what made it easy. It's Lexus Green, and we said it in the open. She knows who's hot, she knows who's not. That's the sign of a good point guard. She's got a, a very good knack of finding people that she thinks has the hot hand. Great pass on time, on target. easily has got eight, it's a 6-0-1 for Bakersfield. They have a five point lead until that down low. An easy finish for Deja Phillips. Well, that was just great spacing, a great cutting, and the patience and the wherewithal to let the offense happen. That's what we mean by get shots out of the offense. Great execution by Hawaii. 16 13s are a score. Bakersfield leading Hawaii inside of two minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Just getting things going here in this quarterfinal matchup. Pass gets over the top, over to Jasmine Dixon. I'll tell you, they really run some good half court stuff here, we're seeing. Very well coached. Four Thank seconds on the shot clock. Easley's running out of time. She's going to launch from way deep and hits it. That one, I'll tell you, wasn't easy. The last one was. Man, deep range. Uh, a Swiss Army knife. She's a sniper. Third three here in the first quarter. That one with one second on the shot clock gives Bakersfield a 19-13 lead with a minute 15 to go in the first. Trent, that's just how they drew it up. <laughs> Alexander on <laughs> a hard collision inside. Alexander's gonna get a couple of free throws. I mean, that was well beyond the Benz line where she hit that three. I'll tell you, there's some NBA or WNBA arenas where you hit a shot from that deep, you win a car. <laughs> so the foul's gonna be on Dixon, that's her first. 
19-13, Bakersfield by six. A minute 12 to go here in the first. There have been five fouls against Bakersfield, just one against Hawaii. As Jasmine Alexander rattles home the free throw, a Big West all-honorable mention player and a member of the all-defensive team in this league, a senior from Washington. Well, I'll tell you, she is extremely aggressive. I, I love her feet. She always is in a stance. She's got great instincts. She, you know, she doesn't reach the steal. She contains, tries to wear people down. Very well versed defensively. CSU Bakersfield missed their first three shots. They've made seven of nine since. Now there's a minute left here in the first quarter. As a step back jumper is good. What a mature move for Green, the 5-5 sophomore, averaging uh, just a little bit over nine points a game. She was able to drive it. She hit the step back, created space, nothing but net. 21-15, Bakersfield by six. That's Newbert. Out of bounds, it's going to stay with the Roadrunners here. But she really, for her size at 6'1", she's very good at putting the ball on the floor. Obviously, she's a lefty, so the lefty drive is easy for her, but I, I, I like that. I'd like to see her rip through, get a little bit lower, and try and get to the rim. Less than 40 seconds to play here in the quarter. It's Alexis Green being guarded in the full court, basically, by Saxon. Off balance shot, offensive rebound. Atwell couldn't get the finish, but we'll go to the line for two with 26.1 ticks to go here in the first quarter. Well, we know, you know, the KYP on Atwell is she's a shooter. She can knock down threes with ease, but I, I think she's underrated in, in her sense of her activity when, you know, she's out there to shoot. She's got the ultimate green light. That, that's not a surprise to anybody. But I think when she doesn't have the ball, she's always moving. She's always grooving because there's so much attention paid to her. She can free up teammates just with a, a cut or coming off a screen or a staggered or a quick hit set up by Laura Beeman. Both free throws good. They're for Amy Atwell. Her first points, shot clock is off. Final 20 seconds of the first, 21-17. CSU Bakersfield leading. That's Saxon up top. And an offensive foul away from the ball. I think they're gonna call this one an angle spin, and they are. They did, it was an easy call, but I'll tell you, we're almost through the first 10 minutes and I became a, I've become a huge fan of Lexus Green. I, I just like, the, I like her demeanor, I like the way she runs this team. She's pesty. 10 seconds to go. It's Phillips. Got to keep her in front. They got to talk it out. Three seconds now. Extra pass right side. Shot no good. And that's what will take us into halftime where CSU Bakersfield is going to have a four-point lead here after the first 10 minutes. 21-17 is our score. Of the four seed leading the five Hawaii here after one quarter in the quarterfinals. The third game of the Big West Women's Basketball Championships. Cal State Fullerton took the first game, upsetting the eight seed UC Riverside, then lost in a tight one. UC Davis 61-54 over the Titans a little over an hour ago. So UC Davis advances. Winner of this game will take on the top seeded Aggies. And later today, it's Irvine, Santa Barbara, then Long Beach State against Cal Poly. Always exciting here in the Big West Conference. So much parity in this league. He's Dave Miller. I'm Trent Rush. Courtney Sweep is on the sidelines. The four-point lead for Bakersfield at the moment. 21-17 is our score. That was Newbert missing at the basket, but how about battling for that rebound was Lexus Green. I tell you, she does a little bit of everything. I mean, you, you can tell she she's the type of player I can tell you already that she doesn't love to win. She hates to lose, and she's going to impact the game in, in, in a lot of ways on the stat sheet, but probably more that don't show up. I love her demeanor and just her thought process. Well, and Hawaii is very familiar with what Green can do. She tries to get a pass in the corner, running out of time, though, before a three ball rattles out for Saxon. But an offensive rebound gets waved off. And that's going to be a whistle against Mackenzie Barn. But I'll tell you what, that, as a coach, you're not upset with that. I, I, as a coach, I'd be upset with that call, but her coach isn't going to be upset with her. I like the way she was in there and just battling, you know, 6'2 junior. Um, she's got to impact the game on both ends in the paint. What I was getting to was Lexus Green had 19 in the first meeting against Hawaii earlier this year. Bakersfield won each of those two meetings. 
That's a travel, but that was also really the start of Hawaii's season. They had played two non-Division One games. It was the start of the league. They were coming off a COVID shutdown. Bakersfield was too, and, and that was really just the first D1 experience for so many Wahine players. Well, they really, they really run some good sets. This team is very well coached on the offensive end of the floor. Going back to the other end, that was also really good defense by Bakersfield. You know, Deja Phillips had had uh, Green on her. Definite mismatch, and you saw Miracle Saxon come down. That's what forced the travel, the double down. Bakersfield has a method to their madness on both ends of the floor. Eggleston's been the leading scorer the last two seasons. Hasn't scored yet in this game, though Alexis Green got pushed from behind on that missed lay-in, but she'll get a couple of free throws. She plays with a low center of gravity. She turns the corner, just ahead. wasn't able to get it up on the square. And at all my basketball camps in the summer, I always teach at a young age, starting at five, the backboard is your friend. If you can play low and, and create separation by getting your shoulders lower than defender's hips, which she did, it's an easy avenue to the uh, glass and hopefully a finish. Foul by Emi is her first. Free throw no good. Easily has got 11 of the 21 for Bakersfield thus far. Helps when you hit 3-3 three, three as Lexus Green has chipped in four. Miracle Saxon with five. Green gets the second. So a five-point lead for Bakersfield right now. For this... Bakersfield squad, they haven't played since February 19th due to a COVID shutdown, their segment of the season, and then they had a bye week after that. So it's been a long time since really they has. played. Yeah. Foul by Miracle Saxon trying to get a takeaway. I think you can kind of see that with the energy from the Roadrunners right now. You can tell that the team has been bottled up too long. It, yeah, it, it is because, you know, co most coaches don't want steals, they want stops. And, you know, you make the great play, you get on Sports Center. that's a good thing. You want to keep your gal in front of you, wall her off, you know, square her up. But, you know, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of shooting the gap with the foul. It's a, it's a different thing on ball reversal. Newbert underneath in traffic, and she is slow to get up, and she is in some pain for sure. Newbert went down hard, and, and she is holding her, her left leg up just a little bit in some apparent pain after this make underneath. But you can see right here, Phillips with the ball. It's a nice post feed. She puts it on the floor. Bond tries to wall her up, and she takes that left angle and just gets her feet tangled, and, and she, she hit pretty hard. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she twisted an ankle or a knee trying to yeah. go down there. You know, the, the Big West has a family. We're sitting here doing the game, and all of a sudden we went to that break, and Jeff Herdman, Erdman, that played for UCI, if you remember that yeah. name. You know, he's watching the game, and he says, Casey Newbert is a good family friend. Her dad played basketball at Nebraska and was a tight end, and in the NFL for eight years, I didn't, I didn't know that. And she also has a sister that played basketball at Oregon and LSU and is now a grad assistant at LMU. So, uh, 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 Jeff, uh, maybe he can join the broadcast with us. <laughs> but uh, it's great to see that you have alumni from the Big West Yep. watching games and uh, uh, he, he he's a he's a high school basketball coach in Manhattan Beach and was a heck of a player well Casey Newbert is the fourth leading rebounder in the Big West so tough to see her go down but a finish inside by Eggleston her first points let's check in with Courtney Sweet guys just a little more on Casey Newbert uh, it was really fun she actually took over the Hawaii Instagram the other day when they got to Vegas and I loved watching it she How good has Andy Easley been in this game, making not one, but two, not three, but four threes so far. She's got 14 points. 
Well, I think she shoots the ball extremely well. She's very well versed, but I'm going to credit her teammates because they understand the hot hand. I said it in the beginning. That's the job of a point guard, Lexus Green, finding people. And there, no defense. Deja Phillips taking the day off there for a second. You've got to be up on her. I mean, once you hit the first one, my bad. The next time, it's your bad. I mean, you know, coaches go over scouting reports, but it's no different than playing a pickup game in the summertime. There's got to be a competitive advantage. If someone hits a shot on me, I'm going to do everything well within my power not to let them even touch the ball the next time down the floor. You know, the really good players, whether it's in college, whether it's in the WNBA, they take it personal. Free throw good for Atwell. You know what's amazing in this game is Bakersfield shooting 58%, Hawaii at 43%. Yet it's a one possession game. Second foul shot is good for Atwell, too, who was just fouled before the last timeout, trying to take a corner three. Here, mid, past the midway point of this second quarter. Let's check back in with Courtney Sweet. Well, just a little bit more on Andy Easley. There's a great article on Bakersfield.com. Trent, you talked about her journey. She was actually poised to go to CSU Bakersfield. Coach McCall was the first to offer her a D1 scholarship, but she shocked everybody when she chose Hawaii. She'd never even visited. But one semester and she knew she needed to come back to the mainland because her mom had some health issues. At the time, Bakersfield didn't have a scholarship, so she transferred to Eastern Washington, had injuries there, finished. But finally, it worked out for her to get back to CSU Bakersfield and join their program. One really cool thing, it's a full circle moment for her. She was born in Bakersfield. Her aunt and uncle live there, so she spends time with them. Her aunt was actually a surrogate for her mom and carried Andy and her twin sister, Alex. So she says being around her family is extra special because her aunt is obviously a big part of her story. Wow. I guess sometimes it's just meant to be. Well, that post move right there would have been meant to be, but I wish that Austin would have caught the ball a little higher. She caught it below the block. We like to teach post players to catch it above the block because when she made the move baseline, she found herself underneath the basket, but very athletic for her to be able to get it up on the glass, even though it missed, and to draw the foul. Austin back the line, gets the first free throw to tie up this game. Bakersfield has led much of it. But well, Hawaii has made three straight shots. They had taken the lead a moment ago before Austin tied it back up and now gets one of two. That's Davies across midcourt. One more pass. Atwell at the basket, offensive foul. A charge taken inside by Vanessa Austin. Well, that's a good defensive possession there. I, I, I wish that when the ball went down the middle, she would have been able to find a teammate to move right here. You're going to see the dribble drive. Vanessa gets there, she plants her feet, and she takes one for the team. I'm going to tell you this. I, I don't ever remember her dad taking a charge <laughs> uh, at Arizona State in the Pac-12. I'm definitely going to be texting him after this game. Job well done, Vanessa. Now with a nice post move underneath and scores. Now her daddy could do that. <laughs> I'll tell you, the next time she shoots a free throw, I got a funny story I'm going to tell you about her dad. But uh, yeah, a very good post move. Read the defense, knew it was the baseline move. Finish. Extra pass to Atwell for a better look. Just rattled out. But a second chance coming for the Wahine. Love Alexander's activity. Atwell this time up an under move, got to the basket. Now a jump ball, but a travel first. And Bakersfield will take over up by two. I'll tell you, Casey Newber just so active on the glass. Uh, you know, you just, I, I, I love the way she tries to make plays to help her team. A lot of people just rest, take a possession off here or there. She plays extremely hard. Jasmine Dixon looking down low to Austin. Austin fighting for it. Earns a second chance for her team. Right back to her, up, and doesn't go. But more free throws coming for Vanessa Austin, which means you also story, Dave Miller. 
But I tell you, when we were at Arizona State and uh, her uncle Alex was there and then we recruited Ike, so he comes in from a junior college and Bill Frieder was the head coach that used to be at Michigan. And we had times. As a guard, you had to run the mile, say, in five minutes, right, or less. A big had to run it in 6.30. Well, Ike was big, right? I mean, he's, he's always 6'11", almost 7 foot, and he was big, if you know what I mean. There was no way he was going to pass this test. So every Sunday we met as a team, and if you meet, met your time, you didn't have to get up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to run. Do you think Ike ever passed his test? <laughs> I couldn't run the mile in, in 13 minutes. So finally I got tired because I was the third assistant. I had to get up and run. So I said to Ike, I go, you don't have to come. He goes, did I make it? And I winked and I said, yes, you made it. And, and that's a story. Let's both stick to it. <laughs> To this day, he's never run a mile in 13 minutes. <laughs> There's Jaden Alexander keeping her dribble going to the ground, but ends up turning it over. Neither team has really turned it over that many times. Six for Hawaii, just two for Bakersfield in this game. That's a good look on the baseline, but no good there for Eggleston. And loose ball comes out to the Wahine. Here's Phillips looking to push. Gets hit on her trip, and Phillips... Now get a couple of free throws, trying to end this two and a half minute scoring drought. Well, that's what I expected to see from Deja Phillips. You know, the, uh, the 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 word on her is, I mean, she she drives right, she can finish right, and you know, I think she really gets excited. She, I I think she'd be the type of player that, and I don't know this, but I'm just guessing. Come to the gym early and want to play one on one. You know, practice, work out, but you, you can see that she puts the ball on the floor. She's coming down the middle of the lane right. No one stopped her. Once you play defense that deep into the lane, something bad is going to happen. The defense has to pick them up. We like to say a couple steps above the three-point line. I call that the point of detonation. Uh, poor defense, draws the foul, gets to the free throw line. Job well done, Deja. It was fun hearing Laura Beeman talk about Deja Phillips earlier this week, saying how she, in high school she was a forward. So she's had to convert to being a guard on the fly and has done so in a very short amount of time. Now is just a freshman, very little collegiate experience, but a Las Vegas native familiar with these parts. And her team down by three at the moment. Austin got caught underneath the hoop, but Phillips gets the rebound. Alexander trying to shift her way through the defense out of bounds. And Bakersfield now has gone into a little bit of a scoring drought. They've missed four straight shots and six of seven. Yeah, I mean, what gave them that, 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 that early lead was they're shooting 83%. They're five of six from the three-point line, and, and now we're seeing Hawaii start to hit you some shots. Because, I mean, think about it, Trent. How many bunnies did they miss? You know, they had a lot of shots up on the rim that just would not fall. Well, it helps when Easley goes four of four, and now Jaden Alexander has full attention right now on Easley. Inside to Austin, a jump ball, and the arrow belongs to Bakersfield, so they'll keep it. You know, it's interesting because I talked it uh, early on how good the guards were for Hawaii, but I really didn't think, and I hadn't seen a lot of games, that they really were able to go inside and have a post presence. I, I like the balance and the mixture. Easily inside, that's Saxon for three, short. And the wrong rebound goes out to Phillips. Great pass. Transition three there for Davies to knock it down. That ties the game at 35. But you know, uh, she can shoot the three, very capable. Um, sometimes I think watching her, she prefers to drive, but uh, she's got skills. I think she, she's a good combo guard. She could help you bring the ball up the court, it appears. Dangerous pass. Davies was coming off the bench. When these teams got together the first time, now she goes back to the hoop and will go to the strike for two more. And that's what I think she does best. I mean, obviously, she can shoot the ball. She was open. It was a great pass from Phillips, but her bread and butter is putting the ball on the floor and being able to get to the rim. And she does an extremely good job of it. You can see she has her eyes on the rim. The defense doesn't get set. Uh, easy call as you see Vanessa fouling her. That's the second on Austin. Free throw good there. For Olivia Davies. Yeah, she was. I mentioned before she was coming off the bench earlier in conference, has earned a starting role, played 36 minutes in Hawaii's win over UC Davis just last weekend, and gets both free throws here to give her team a two point lead. So five straight points from the freshman Olivia Davies, an Alaska native. 
<laughs> Trying to get him organized. A little cross screen, I think, to bring Austin into the post. I think that was Austin that knocked over Andy Easley right there. But you know, it's going to be a foul against Hawaii, but I think it was Austin that, that created yeah. that contact. I mean, it reminded me of Weevil's wobble, but sometimes they do fall down. It's sort of a, a reaction. Uh, but it, it was it was nice to see they, they, they weren't quite sure what they were running, and it was going to be a little cross screen to try and get a post feed. So Barbara Rangel ends up kind of getting the raw end of that. She gets called for the personal, which... Sends easily to the line for a couple of free throws. She gets that one. She has 15 points in 18 minutes in this game. Wrangle the rebound. So sometimes the tap of the head means you're going to get a high ball screen, which Wrangle came up to do. And she's just going to wait for the clock to go down and then try and get a, dry, a right hand drive. Yeah, nice Phil kick. Phillips going to work. Eight seconds now. Davies back to Phillips underneath for two points. Big time athletic play. Great Final. execution. Final three seconds. A three quarter court heave off the backboard and Hawaii with a strong finish held Bakersfield without a bucket the final 318 of the first half and it's the Wahine who are up by three at the break. Well it's amazing how this is a game of runs and I don't use that as a cliche but but there were certain runs and Hawaii was able to close it out the momentum their way both teams finished 44 percent from the field and identically were 12 for 27 with their field goals. It was a very balanced first half, but Hawaii was on the run at the end of the half to get some things going. Bakersfield missed eight of the last nine shots, kind of backpedaling into halftime. All right, coming up on our halftime report presented by University Credit Union, we'll talk about the Big West Conference and the award season that went on just this past week. We'll also talk about some first half stats and highlights from this one. We will take a short time out. When we come back, we'll have that halftime report for you. It's Hawaii 39, CSU Bakersfield 36 of the break. Here are the quarterfinals of the Big West Women's Basketball Championships. It's Hawaii by three here as we get set for the start of the third quarter, but first tell you that the Big West Championships are presented by Air Force Reserve to explore your opportunities with Air Force Reserve. Go to AFReserve.com. By Hawaiian Airlines. Book your flight with confidence at HawaiianAirlines.com. By Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. And by Hawaii Tourism. Brought to you by the Hawaiian Islands. Visit GoHawaii.com. It's the Wahine 39, Bakersfield, the Roadrunners 36. And now Courtney Sweet is standing by with the head coach of the Wahine, Laura Beeman. So coach, it seemed that defensive stops really created offense for you. What were the things that your team did to kind of turn the tide? You know, we're a young team and we have to continue to coach them up and love them up every play. Um, you know, it's about adjustments this time of the year. And so defensively, you know, we know that 22 easily can shoot the ball very, very well. We have to do a better job on her. We know 54 can be a handful in the paint. We just have to continue to play better team defense. When we get stops, you're right, it does generate a little bit of offense for us. Um, we just have to lock in a little bit more offensively as well. And how proud are you of the way that your team just keeps fighting? I love these guys. They're, they're young. And, you know, it's, it's they make our jobs and our lives very, very fun coming to work um, because what they don't know, they don't know. And sometimes you're like, how did they not know that? Uh, but they're they're adorable. They, they are fighters and it gives me uh, a lot of comfort and just a lot of excitement not only for this tournament but moving on in the future. Well coach good luck the second half. I love watching on the sidelines so we'll be uh, getting some cameras on <laughs> I appreciate you. that. Thank you. It's Thanks, good to coach. see you guys. All right. Bye-bye. You know you know it's genuine coming from Laura Beeman because it's one thing to talk about your team like on a Sunday conference call like that. It's another when you're at halftime in a three-point game to glow about your team like that as we take a look at some first half stats. Well, I think the number one thing that hits you, Trent, is the rebounds. When you look 22 to 12, that's a plus 10 differential. And then second chance points, that's because they're doing such a good job of working that offensive glass. Both teams, even Steven at 44%. I'm telling you, I think if Hawaii continues to offensive rebound, that's going to give them a chance for separation. But getting back to Laura Beeman, you know, she just has a culture there. And I talked to her for a couple of years ago, and you mentioned a junior college coach, a major college assistant at USC, and then an assistant with the Sparks. She brings so many different levels. And she's not only a coach, she's a role model for these young ladies that venture out to go play for them. You mentioned the, the junior college level where she was at Mount Sac, and as I mentioned, in the Hall of Fame for California Junior Colleges. That's where she got to know Greg McCall, the head coach yeah. at CSU Bakersfield, who was at Taft for a long time. Those two go back like some 20 years that they've known each other. 
I'll tell you, Courtney Sweet is going to watch Beeman. I think McCall wants to get in the game and play. He's up and down like uh, Faith does for Cal Poly. Good to see Casey Newbert back into the game. And she goes up and scores, wearing a tape brace on that left leg back in. Uh, it's nice zipper action into a high ball screen. And now they're going to get Austin in the post. I love this play. Austin with power yes. underneath. I'll tell you, do you know how fortunate we've been? This is our, we had a game yesterday, our second one today. We've seen some excellent coaching in the Big West. Yeah, that's something that I hope doesn't get lost when people look at the Big West. Because there are some outstanding coaches here as Austin gets a swat. Yeah, and Trent, I'm not talking about wins and losses. I'm talking about watching teams execute yeah. game plans. And the, and the girls are very receptive to the coaching. Imai off the glass for three. All right, I'm going with her through the casino and whatever slap machine she goes by, she can't gamble, but I'm going to sit there and put in a, are there penny slots or am I showing my age? Uh, I, I, you can find them, but good luck. Maybe not at Mandalay Bay. It's a six point game right now. It's Hawaii's biggest lead. Bakersfield trying to turn that around is Eggleston couldn't get that one to drop. Just two points in the first half for their leading scorer, Eggleston, who averages close to 13 a night. Ime with an ankle break and move down low, but kicked it back out. Well, listen, she's a freshman. That's what Laura Beeman told Courtney. She's young. I mean, if she would have turned and looked at the basket, which you're supposed to do as an offensive player, she would have had a nice little attempted uh, uh, deuce. Back to Austin. You can tell the game plan right now for Greg McCall's team. Get the ball down low. Use that size. You, you can, but what I'm going to tell Vanessa when I meet her after the game, socially distance and talk to her father, when the pass comes into the post and her dad did a great job in the NBA doing this, you have to meet your pass. You always hear me talk about that against the press, but in the post, same thing. Balls come and meet your pass with the jump stop, chin it, and then read the defense. You mentioned great coaches and, and it's one thing to coach your team and your players but Greg McCall has two daughters that have played in the WNBA and has had a lot of success there in Dewana and Erica that free throw is good well I always say this if you want to be a pro you should find a place that's coached by a former pro yep. okay because let me ask you this Trent what, what's it like to be on the moon I have no idea. Yeah, that's right. And so I get sick and tired of hearing people talk about the NBA or college or coaching Division I basketball, and they haven't done it. You've got to do it to know what you're talking about. Pass somehow gets through to Emi. Now an open look on the right side for Davies, and she gets it. Hawaii's run continues. Timeout Bakersfield, and now a 10-point lead for the Wahine. A 7-0 run for Hawaii is going to take us through a timeout. 7.35 left to go here in the third. Wahine on fire. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service, where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. Something special is happening in the Southern San Joaquin Valley. Roadrunners are rising up, breaking barriers and reaching new heights, moving forward at lightning speed in pursuit of intellectual progress both on the field and in the classroom. Rise with us at California State University, Bakersfield. The coral is the oldest of our ancestors. There is a molecule that is not only found in coral tissue, it's found in the lungs and in the heart of the human. Science now has empowered me to speak of this idea of human environmental connection that I grew up with, that I just see as the truth. So did my ancestors. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? 
doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. Time now for a Hercules Tires strong move of the game. How about this from the point guard? Kelsey Emai knocking down that tray. Starts with a good move down low. Atwell gets into the paint. And then the bank is open for the freshman Hawaii native. Knocking it down. It's a 10 point lead right now for the Wahine over CSU Bakersfield. Hawaii's on a 7 0 run in the last 90 seconds. Emai's three, a big part of that. She has 10 points. And that is the difference in the game at the moment. What great misdirection. Looking to get the ball in the post, a little circle action. The, the, McCall really can coach. Very impressed seeing his team for the first time live. Saxon into the paint. That ends the run. Miracle Saxon. Second leading scorer, excuse me, third leading scorer, leading rebounder. And she's aggressive. She wants to get downhill and good things happen. Vanessa, good job walling off Newberg in the paint. Atwell with the drive and dish. Two bodies went flying. Emai now gets rid of it. Watch the shot clock. Four seconds. Left hand. No good. Now push it and go. Yeah, Bakersfield kind of took their time to set up the offense. Yeah, and, and again, now you got to set. So now it's the chess match. You know, I want to have an advantage. I want to have numbers. Opportunistic. You don't have to, you know, go like the old LMU teams. Eggleston inside just couldn't get it to drop. One of six shooting so far in this game. Just two points again for the leading scorer on the season for Bakersfield. Atwell's three off the front of the rim. But a loose ball foul is going to go against Hawaii's Jaden Alexander getting that rebound. Well, I tell you, I, uh, again, there, there's some calls that I see differently. I don't know. I'm not going to say that was the wrong call. I don't necessarily agree with that call. You know, you've got players that are uh, in a possession and that are playing extremely hard. I give her credit for trying to rebound the basketball. Here's Lexus Green. Strong family ties to Greg McCall. They go they do a generationally. Great, I'm sorry, they do a great job with the flare screen to set up action to get downhill. Saxon coming off the screen, knocks it down from the elbow. Well, I really love the shot, but if I was, I watch off ball sometimes. Mackenzie Bond, she went to the rim just to, you know, good rebounders assume every shot is a miss. That's your best rebounders in the Big West. Three ball for Newbert, no good. Big time block out by uh, Andy Easley. Up the floor to the basket goes Boyd. Bond an offensive foul. Easiest call of the night. So that's two now on Bond. 48-42, five and a half left in the third. The freshman Emi running that point guard position. A role that Laura Beeman didn't exactly expect for Emi this year. She was thrust into it after Nene Calhoun got hurt earlier in the season. And Emi's really had to grow on and off the floor as that jumper's no good for Atwell, who gets it back to the basket. Can't quite get it, but will have a couple of free throws coming her way. Amy Atwell, a sixth year senior, had a chance to leave but didn't. Wanted to come back, not just to develop in her own right, something that's important to her. She wants to be a professional, but more than all of that, to win a championship for Hawaii.
Oh, there's something to be said about that. I mean, you talk about being a pro. She definitely can shoot it. Uh, she's got deep range. And, and what I really have noticed today, she's got a nice quick release. And, you know, she's the type of player that she's got to get into a rhythm. So you've got to have a team that has the spacing, that has the ball movement. And, and again, she could heat up like a microwave really quick. We've seen that over the years. They like to run this horn set that you see a lot of the men's team in NBA and WNBA players play. Easily was the hot hand in the first half. Good two-man game. Can't get that. Bond, it's the offensive board. Gets hit going up. And that is going to be a foul on Barbara Rangel. So free throws coming for the junior center. Mackenzie Bond, when we return, her team hunting. An eight-point deficit right now. It's 50-42. Championship week across ESPN. We're in Vegas for the Big West Women's Basketball Championships. It's the 5-4 matchup. Yesterday an upset with the nine seed Cal State Fullerton taking down the eights. UC Riverside, I think Cal State Fullerton really gave the one seed UC Davis a game earlier today. And right now it's the five seed up eight over the four in CSU Bakersfield. Though Mackenzie Bond gets the first free throw. I'll tell you, how, how how big was the fight in that Cal State Fullerton team? Low numbers, huge heart, put two games together, just couldn't finish off Davis today. Six-point game. Goes out of bounds and will stay with Hawaii. Possession stays with Hawaii. Something going on over on the Hawaii bench. And I want to make sure that they get the clock organized. Four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Took two seconds off the shot clock. So you want to get that right? Was an opportunity to get Deja Phillips into the game. Now we're all square. All right. Pass it in, and Emai can run the offense for the Wahine. Splitting two defenders. Hits the open player, Phillips in the corner, no. Goes over the top, out of bounds. You know, we were talking a lot about Lexus Green, number 11 for, excuse me, uh, yeah, number 11 for CSU Bakersfield earlier in this game. Her father, Jeff, played with Greg McCall and is one of the, the 10 best players in school history way back when. At Bakersfield? Yeah, that's a relationship that goes awesome. way back. Yeah. I really like her game. Her pops can be very proud of her. Good little player. Less than four minutes to go here in the third. Four seconds on the shot clock. Eggleston. No. Boy, they really need her, Bakersfield does, to get going because while they do play their team offense when your best player is really kind of being handcuffed here in this game. It makes things really tough. And right now, down by six. Oh, that's the game plan on the other side. Emite to the basket, but how about that rebound by Alexis Green underneath? Smallest here she comes. on the floor. The floater right over Atwell. I called that earlier. I just, I've seen enough tape to know that. That's a difficult shot. I used to work out with Chris Paul before and after practice in New Orleans, and we'd shoot two, three hundred of those pre-practice and post-practice. Very difficult shot, high degree of difficulty. No, I know what that was, Coach. All those times you wanted to push, there's an open look for Emi, it's an air ball out of bounds. All those times you wanted Bakersfield to go right to the basket, they brought it back out. It was all just a setup for that play right there. <laughs> Blow them to sleep. <laughs> Well, now it's just a four-point game, and, and, you know, we have had really quality, competitive basketball here. And this is the third game here on the women's side of the bracket. The men are here as well in the Big West Conference at Mandalay Bay, and they have just been really good basketball games. Good kick. Saxon for three. Can't quite get it. I saw she was fading away. I mean, you're shooting a three ball. you got to go straight up. you got to shoot it at the apex. That's a difficult shot of fading away. And, and thus you saw it come short. Olivia Davies checks back in for Hawaii. 
Hawaii has to figure out some things offensively. They've missed seven straight shots, eight of nine. They haven't scored at all in two and a half minutes. And Bakersfield has done a good job of getting some points in the paint, trying yeah. to even that out. Good backdoor cut, set it up. Right to Alexander. Couldn't get it to fall, but she'll get two free throws here. Well, I really like the, you, you see if you, I, I talk about it all the time. If you want to get the ball and you're being pressured, take a step or two in the opposite direction. She pulled the string in. I didn't know that Deja Phillips right here, you see. She just lulls her to sleep. The defense comes just a day late and a dollar short. She draws the foul, but that's, that's not only good basketball. That's not a scripted play. That's when you have players that can play within the system and really good coaches like Beeman, like McCall, they give you the roadmap. But if you can get somewhere a little bit quicker, sooner and safer, you don't always have to use the game plan or the roadmap. Well, and now Saxon goes to the bench. That's a big foul. Mel uh, Melody Saxon called for that per or personal miracle Saxon, that is. That's her fourth. Big time. So now she goes to the bench, and there's a lot of basketball left. Alexander now in double figures with 10. Hawaii by six. Hawaii has not made a shot in over five minutes, yet they're up by six in this game. They're making their free throws, though, 16 of 21. Green. Back to Eggleston. Doesn't fall. That's the best look Eggleston's had all night. Into the corner for Atwell, off the side of the backboard. Well, I like the way uh, Deja Phillips, she, she's very unselfish, pushing the ball, finding shooters. Easily, underneath to Austin. Found the right angle, but unable to get it done down low was Austin. And it's gonna be Hawaii basketball. Really good post feed, that, that was, again, you talk about high degree of difficulty. What a, what a pass. I mean, what don't you like about that? I mean, it easily had the pump fake for the yeah. better look. She took a dribble over to the right side, found the better passing lane, got it down low to a good seal inside. It was everything but a made shot. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's being a good teammate, and it really speaks to how unselfish. And again, we haven't seen really I, in in the three games we've done. I've seen about three bad shots, you know, and two of them were probably because of late clock. Sure, but uh, but uh, again, I just like the way both these programs are run. Uh, the Big West should be very proud to have them in the league. And, and obviously, we see SU Bakersfield being newcomers. That's an offensive foul on Deja Phillips. Player control foul, and there to take it. Alexis Green underneath. Well, I think Vanessa Austin is setting a family record because Ike Austin never took a charge, nor did Alex. Uh, you can see here on the replay, she's just going. She's got that head of steam. Austin squares up, takes the contact, absorbs it on her chest. That, that To me, that's as good a play as a dunk. To me, that's as good a play as a, as a made three in transition. That's the second one she's taken in this game. Yes, sir. Six foot three, Vanessa Austin, taking two charges. Step back for easily if this goes. No, it's off the mark. Again, somebody's got to stop the basketball. You got to pick her up higher. That's no good. Up ahead. Can't get the lamp. Eggleston is there, though, to clean it up and put it back in. That ends a scoring drought. You can hear the noise inside Michelob Ultra Arena right now. That is the CSU Bakersfield men's team that is here sitting behind the bench. This is the first crowd we've had in a year and a 10 second violation. A turnover and Bakersfield getting it back and the fellows are going nuts behind the bench. But I tell you, once they walked in, they elevated the play of their of, of their fellow student athletes, and it's good to see them. They probably had practice, or maybe they're getting their testing. I'm not quite sure, but to come in and to pay some respect to the young ladies that that participate and that, that play the same sport they do, I, I like that family atmosphere. Pass gets taken away. Four pass. Yeah, Newbert stripped it, and then Alexander on the other end lays it up and in. Well, that's what I like, a two-foot jump stop. She didn't want to take off and have a chance to get it blocked. Jump stop, collect yourself, finish. First bucket in seven minutes for Hawaii, and then there to respond was Austin on the other side. 
where we had two good paint scores for, for both teams. And then you see Jasmine Dixon just trying to turn it up and, and just play some good defense, just trying to fight and anticipate. We talked about her being disruptive defensively, one of the better ladies in, that, in playing the passing lanes and doing it without fouling most of the time. Shot clock is off, just a four-point game right now. You know, for Hawaii to be struggling as much as they have offensively and still have the lead, I think speaks volumes as to the way that they've controlled this game with their defense. That's how you win in tournament play. Defend and rebound. Neither team has shot the ball well here in the third, but that one goes for the sixth player of the year. So Deja you, Phillips. So you've heard me say this a million times. She wants to drive it right. So you've got to get on that right hand, number one, and you, you square up and you don't allow her to make that drive. You want to make her drive towards the Hawaii bench. But then once she gets beat, somebody's got to move. As the ball moves, you move. And uh, uh, a not very good defense that time by CSU Bakersfield. Phillips, nine points already in this game. You know, I mentioned she was the sixth player of the year. It looks like Easley might have a cut on her jersey or a cut on her leg that she'll be attended to right now by the medical staff. Maybe some blood on the jersey. That's what it is. So she'll get cleaned up here. As we'll see Deja Phillips to the line. You know what's amazing? You know, Laura Beeman, this her, for nine seasons, she's been the head coach at Hawaii. Six of the nine years, she's had a player, the sixth player of the year in the league. So she has always had that option coming off the bench that gives you big minutes. Deja Phillips is playing starter minutes right now. She oh, has been that for yeah. sure. And that's you can't take her off the floor. It speaks to the culture. Because what happens when you're not happy with your playing time? <laughs> you know, you think you should be a starter. You don't care about starter minutes. Some kids have egos. And then others, it's more about we than me. Green at the buzzer does not go. And Hawaii... Well, despite a sluggish third quarter for them offensively, the Wahine are going to take a seven-point lead into the final break. Fourth quarter after this here on ESPN. The Big West Basketball Championships are presented by Air Force Reserve. To explore your opportunities with Air Force Reserve, go to AFreserve.com. By Ready Nutrition, the official sports drink of the Big West Conference. By University Credit Union, invites Big West alumni and fans to bank with your brain and open an account today. Visit ucu.org. And by Hawaii Tourism, brought to you by the Hawaiian Islands. Visit gohawaii.com. Laura Beeman's Hawaii Wahine have a seven point lead start of the fourth quarter. 57 50s are score easily. Had 15 first half points, did not score in the third. She's going to inbound it here for the four-seeded Roadrunners. Here in the Big West Basketball Championships quarterfinal round, winner of this game will take on UC Davis. So some blood on the jersey is why she had to come out earlier, but she is back in. And now here comes, or here come the Roadrunners. Foul on the baseline is going to be against Atwell. That was on number 25, Atwell. That's her second. So that's two on her. Opportunity underneath the hoop. Easily had a little bit of space, gave it away. Now it's green. Lexus. Just shy. They just got to get a little bit more leg. She has not come off the floor, it seemed like, in this game. Eggleston, Green, and Easley have a combined four minutes of time on the bench. It's March. No good down low by Emai. Now here comes Bakersfield again. Green. At the basket, the fall away. Can't quite get it. But how about Austin crashing the boards and scoring down low? That's a key. When a shot goes up, I don't care where Vanessa Austin is. If you're in green, and it may not even be your man, somebody's got to put a body on her. And that may not even be enough. But you got to block out. you got to keep her off the offensive glass and limit their second chance opportunities. 
Should be a shot right there. Newbert puts it up, doesn't fall, but there for the rebound as Phillips just couldn't get it. And then gets hit, trying to create a third chance. I had no idea, you know, on tape, you really can't see how somebody plays hard. You, you can see tendencies, but Deja Phillips plays as hard as anybody I've seen so far in the three games that we've had in this tournament, Trent. Active on both ends of the floor. You can feel the intensity. And you know what, Dave, we expected this in this matchup with these two teams. Well coached, play hard, competitive, similar records. This is the kind of game we thought we could see. As Laura Beeman looks on. And they're physical. You know, they, 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 they take pride in their defense. They take pride in rebounding. You know, Bakersfield, much better inside than what I envisioned. Again, watching them in, in real time and not on tape. Phillips has 11. Alexander's led the way with a dozen for Hawaii. Imai with 10. Eggleston, no, gets her own miss and puts it up and in. Yeah, I didn't like the initial shot because she didn't have anything and she forced it. Maybe, again, she might tell me she was looking to draw the foul. But, man, what about a second effort to go get the ball after she missed it and put it back in? Big time play. Out of bounds. Bakersfield's getting it back. I tell you, it's, it's, it's really nice and exciting to see the men's team. They've moved them now into the end zone in section 114 to be up on their feet and just cheering their team, their, their, their fellow uh, uh, schoolmates on. Just adding to the atmosphere here at Mandalay Bank. They've had, really have done a good job of running that zipper action into the high ball screen. It's been very productive. Easily. Nice. Ten to shoot. Nice move. Eggleston for three. Slips right off the iron. Close, but no cigar. Very good shot. Great ball movement. Into the corner. Melanie McBee, the freshman, comes into the game. Does not play that many minutes, but came in at a critical time and hit a big bucket right there for the Wahine. Now you got to watch this. If Newbert, and now she's behind, but if they front Austin, then you want to go high low. You want to get her the basketball. They're trying to go inside. Boy, what a battle right now with Newbert and Austin. Off balance looks an air ball. Austin ends up with it, then gets fouled, and will go back to the line. Well, Austin's very, very active inside. When she wants the basketball, the shot goes up. She's in there. I mean, we've seen her dive on that baseline uh, to the right-hand side a, a couple minutes ago. She plays extremely hard at 6'3". 12 points, five boards tonight, 19 minutes. Vanessa Austin averages about seven points a game on the year. Did have 22 in a contest against Santa Clara earlier this season. Hits the free throw. And her free throw shooting has been very good. She's five of seven in this game from the line. And is working hard to keep Bakersfield right there within striking distance. She makes both free throws and it's right back to be a five point game. I don't know if you heard this, but did you hear one of the gals say I got shooter right before they shot the free throw? That's the thing that, that, that that's when you're well coached because you just don't do that sometimes. You know, life is habits. Basketball is a game of habits. What you do all the time is it, it, it's your daily routine. I, I love this. It's Alexander with it now. Open is Newbert. She puts it on the ground. Back out, better look for Alexander, doesn't fall. But an yeah. offensive rebound for Phillips who puts it in. I'm just gonna tell you, I saw her, she eyed it up, she had the angle, guess who's there? All you gotta do is look for number zero, Deja Phillips. I don't know if anyone's playing harder than her out on the floor, maybe Vanessa on the other side. 13 and seven for her, shot no good underneath, a jump ball and the arrow belongs to Hawaii. So the Wahine are getting it back. Phillips with a... Team best 13. So there's Jordan Alexander taking the inbound. The men trying to show their support for Bakersfield down by seven. Oh, there's a drive. Newbert runs into traffic. Got seven on the shot clock. Alexander! Alexander! 
Second team all-conference player getting it done. Much better shooter than what I saw on tape. Again, I told you that she likes to drive it. Very, very good shooter. Get nice, clean looks. Now it's a nine-point game in favor of the Wahine. Easily needed that. Doesn't fall. Newport had a hand on it. Couldn't bring it in, so it's going to stay with Bakersfield. Now Bakersfield has missed four shots in a row. If there's one thing we have learned in this tournament, nobody's safe. After a nine over the eight yesterday, the nine nearly knocked off the one earlier today, and now the five has a nine-point lead on the four in Bakersfield here with about five and a half minutes left. Lexus Green says, don't count us out yet. And she also says, I've got a nice little tight game, boy. That tight dribble, she kept it. That ball on a string, she put it on the floor, stop and pop, butter. Open look for Newbert. Knocked it down. Her first three, she's got seven to go along with six boards and her team's up by 10. I knew she could finish inside. I didn't know she had that in her arsenal. This is Hawaii's largest lead. Saxon, no. Leading the break, it's Phillips. Very unselfish, good pass. Alexander hits it for Hawaii. Fourth straight shot made by the Wahine. A 6-0 run in 30 seconds. And Bakersfield needs a timeout. It's Hawaii by 13, thanks to this. Buckets for Alexander. And Alexander, 17 points, doing a little bit of everything. Hearing this with Dave Miller. Well, offensively, she's got into a rhythm, and you've got to credit her teammates. Able to find her and to get it to her on time and target. What a great unselfish play by Phillips. Catch, shoot, lock, loaded. Whatever you want to say, it was nothing but net noise. I got to tell you this, Trent. I mentioned earlier that she was long and bouncy. But to me, watching film, I thought she was a defensive menace. I, I watch her on this end. She denies. She, I've seen her stop ball reversals, and she rebounds. She's got a total game going on today. She has stopped Andy Easley here in the second half. Big time. Saxon gets fouled. I think the foul was first, and it was on the ground. Now they're going to get together and decide. It, should, it, I, it wasn't shooting, I don't believe. Yeah, they're going to call this on the ground. That's the right call. Going back to Jaden Alexander, how about this bounce back for her? She went 0 for 7 in her last game in a loss against UC Davis. Now let's come back and 17 points. A good players step up and coaches have faith in them. What a take underneath there for Lexus Green. Lexus might end up doing some commercials for Lexus. She's smooth. Newbert gets hit. She'll have some foul shots coming up here. Foul goes against Easley. Her second. Just like, again, Deja Phillips with the ball. Instead of looking for her own shot, she looks for a teammate, and you got to credit Newbert. She's working on the other end extremely hard, runs the floor, trying to get that easy cut, receive the pass, and try and get the basket. I don't know how well folks can hear this watching the broadcast right now, but we, we mentioned that the CSU Bakersfield men's team was here to support their team. Well, now the Hawaii men's team is here to support their team. So there's a real energy in the arena right now. Here are no fans for the Big West basketball championships here this season. But Tier 1 players are here and making some noise. That shot's off the mark. Hawaii up by 13 right now and looking to add on. Good lead pass to Atwell, but stripped. Big play by Lexus again. She just, she loves to play. You know, I can give all kinds of adjectives about her game and what she's doing and tell you why, when and where. She loves to play basketball because she competes. There, you got the same action we were seeing there, except she dribbles left instead of the ball screen. Back to Newbert. Found the slashing Phillips to the hoop. Got it. 
so athletic, being able to put the ball on the floor, uh, avoiding a charge, and, and just getting the shot off and using the backboard. Five straight makes for Hawaii. They have a 15-point lead, but a foul here is going to see Lexus Green going to the line for a couple of free throws. Green 11 points, six boards here this evening. But right now, CSU Bakersfield is looking like they're starting to run out of gas. And maybe this has something to do with being shut down as long as they were. This is our first game since February 19th. Well, I think, Trent, you also have to understand this is their first trip to the tournament. And, you know, uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate thought that came through my mind, but you have to learn how to win. And when you get into a different league, they've been very, very successful. So now, you, you know, you're coming in here. This, this is a thing that Beeman's been doing for many, many years in the other team. So, you know, it's about taking your lickings. And, you know, this game is, well, it, it's getting close to, to being out of reach. Yeah, not quite yet, especially after that offensive rebound. A green three would help. It's off the mark. And the rebound goes to the Wahine. And a whistle. Yeah, Bakersfield starting to run out of time here. Hawaii up 15 with just over three minutes left. Foul goes on Eggleston. And that's three on her, just six points, four rebounds for Eggleston, who's been a leading scorer for the last two seasons. Oh, there's a double, somebody's open, and now just pitch it ahead by the pass. Atwell was wide open, decided clock management more important than putting up a shot right there. The smart play. Absolutely smart. Heads up basketball by Hawaii. Alexander with the take. Still loose. It's going to be a foul against Hawaii. Was it Alexander? It's their fifth. Yeah, but it is on Alexander. Her second. Foul. Silly, it's, silly it's, foul. And, and you, you know what? I, I love the effort. I love the hustle. We talked about her. You know, she's extremely athletic. But yeah, well, it puts Bakersfield in the bonus too. Eggleston at the line. Her first free throws in this game. Able to make the first Bakersfield shot. At one point was shooting 60% midway through the second quarter. And their game shooting percentage is down to 38%. Yeah. It's a different Hawaii team in the second half. Yeah. Big rebound underneath by Newbert. CSU Bakersfield's familiar with coming to Vegas. They were in the WAC before this, and this is where they have their tournament. So this isn't entirely new to them. But, but you bring up a good point about returning to the, you know, coming to a new league and, and figuring teams out. Bakersfield won each of the first two meetings against Hawaii earlier this year. Newbert down low, but this is a totally different Wahine team from when these teams got together back in early January. 2.27 to go, Laura Beeman knows a thing or two about getting to the NCAA tournament. Was there, I believe that was 2016 it was, when she took Hawaii to the NCAA tournament, ending an 18-year drought. Then was in the Big West Tournament Final. In the last Big West Tournament Final, that was in 2019, and, and we're in the semis last year before the shutdown. So Laura Beeman's teams know how to win in this event. As we check back in with Courtney Sweet. Well, Trent, you know, you mentioned this is the first experience in the tournament for CSU Bakersfield. But on the other side for Hawaii, only seniors Amy Atwell, Jaden Alexander, and sophomore Casey Newbert have played in a conference tournament at the Division I level. So, you know, Laura Beeman talks about the youth of her team. Um, and Coach McCall told us earlier she always gets her teams ready to play their best basketball this year. I've been really impressed today with, you know, those three setting the tone. But these uh, underclassmen, they don't seem to be scared of the spotlight at all. They've played like older players, I think. Yeah, players like Phillips and Emai have not looked like freshmen. And you know what? By the time you come to Borge, and, and Dave, you know this, you're not freshmen anymore by this point in the season. Absolutely not. Yeah, you know, once you get to Christmas break, you're coming back, freshmen become sophomores, sophomores become juniors, and so on, absolutely. Bakersfield will take over, down by 14 points, starting to run out of time here with just over two minutes left. 
Alexis Green right back into the game for Bakersfield. As things have gotten away from the Roadrunners here in the second half. Easily at 15 first half points, and that bucket her first of the second half. She's got a nice little game. I, I, I really, she is skilled offensively. She can handle it. She understands spacing, she angles, creating space. Nice job. 12 point game, not over yet, but boy, Bakersfield needs a stop in a hurry. Easily picks up her fourth personal on a reach in, and she looked tired. Well, you can always tell if we can get a shot of her on the line when you're leaning over and you're either tugging on your shorts or you got your hands on your knees at any level of basketball, it tells you that that fatigue has set in. No good by Jaden Alexander. And, you know, should Hawaii be able to win this game? What an interesting meeting. Just beat UC Davis this past weekend. Split with the Aggies. And Hawaii feels they should have swept that series. I'm sure UC Davis probably feels the same way as <laughs> Olivia Davies is foul. I, I was going to throw that in, but I, I didn't <laughs> want to be the shell answer, man. And, and you know I like to talk, right? So I was like, okay. But point well taken. Davies back to the strike. 11 points for her with that made free throw. I'm going to wait till after this for my next comment. Gets that. Has not missed tonight. Three Thank for three, Thank two you. of two from behind the arc, and four for four at the stripe. <laughs> I, I think I would have thrown a piece of paper at you since we're like 15 <laughs> feet apart. Lexus Green gets hit on the other end, and now we'll go get a couple of free throws. Davies picks up the personal, her second. Well, this has been a real pleasure to uh, to see CSU Bakersfield in person, a, a really good addition. We know that they've had great success. We know they have good academics. Really glad to have them enter the Big West because I, I think they're going to benefit, but I think our teams as well, the ones that have been here for a long time, are, are going to benefit as well. It looks like it's going to be a happy marriage. 92 seconds left for Hawaii to hang on. Up by 13 at the moment after that made free throw by Green. 13 points for Alexis Green, the floor general, the sophomore. A bright future ahead for this Bakersfield program. What a great addition to the Big West Conference. CSU Bakersfield is banned, I would say, on both the men's and women's sides. And Greg Olson, or Greg McCall, rather, an outstanding coach with this Bakersfield group. You bring up a great point because when, when you mentioned the men's program, both, both programs play hard. Mm -hmm. Both programs are extremely well coached. They're physical. They, they rebound the basketball. They have a post presence. Like I said, overall from A to Z, great addition to our league. Two free throws for Olivia Davies. 15 points for her. 79-65 is our scores. They'll roll it across midcourt. With that layup, Green just trying to keep it from becoming a formality at this point, a foul immediately as it gets over to Olivia Davies. But should Hawaii be able to hang on in this one? What an interesting next matchup that's going to be against UC Davis. Well, you, you, you certainly have two coaches, again, that are at the tops of their profession. You've got talented guards. You've got both teams, you know, have an inside presence and, and really pride themselves on the offense, the defense, and the rebound. I mean, Beeman has just done a wonderful job with the X's and O's, but, you know, I would be remiss not to talk about what she does for the community. She understands the culture at Hawaii. Um, she recruits players that fits into not just the university, but the people of the island, and, you know, She's a real benefit to have over there and to, and to represent this league and has done just a great, fantastic job on and off the floor. Green with the step back. Can't get the three. Saxon tries to save it. Hawaii basketball. Hawaii now a little over a minute away from getting to the Big West Tournament semis for a third straight season. 
And when it comes to March, Laura Beeman's teams know how to win. And now they're just hanging on to it. Bakersfield's not going to foul. Hawaii will advance. Another upset here in this tournament. Hasn't the lower seed, it, hasn't the lower seed in every game uh, a one? It, with, the, with, the, with the exception of the nine seed over the one yeah, but I, in UC Davis. But yeah, it was a nine over well, yesterday. Eight, I meant men and women's. Yes, men and women. Men and women's was the, yesterday. The lower seed won all of them. Yeah. And there have been five total games in this tournament. The lower seed has won four. Shot clock is off. Uh, final 15 seconds and change. Just waiting for the clock to run out here. It's Hawaii, the five seed over the four. CSU Bakersfield, the Wahine are headed back to the semis and they will get a rematch with the one in UC Davis coming up on Friday. A 14 point win for the Bows. Laura Beeman and Greg McCall exchange pleasantries as Hawaii is headed back to the semis and what an interesting matchup.